Next, we're going to talk about the sample and hold mixer. The sample and hold mixer. In the previous videos, I've stated that this is a terrible name for it. But I mean, I'm not sure what name would be the appropriate name for it because it actually is serving a multitude of purposes. It is essentially the low frequency oscillator, which is a really simple part of this synthesizer. Unlike some other synthesizers, this LFO is really simple. It just has uh, basically a sine wave and a square wave and a speed. However, uh, they give you the opportunity with the sample and hold mixer to make it into a more complex modulation by sort of combining it weirdly with the sample and hold. It gets very confusing. And because of the label, I think people have sort of missed out that there's a treasure trove of functionality that's kind of hidden here in this weird sort of uh, not clearly defined and extremely unique functionality. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, some of this we've talked about before. We're going to talk about it again. That's just what's going to happen. Here we go. Right now, oscillator two uh, is being modulated by the sample and hold. Here's the sample and hold. It is controlled by the LFO frequency. Uh, it looks at a noise waveform, which is completely random. It looks at that random waveform and the clock of the LFO frequency tells it when to take a voltage sample. And it does, and then it holds that voltage. So when we have that applied to the second oscillator, that means it's gonna hold a frequency. So it sounds like this. As I increase the LFO, the clock time increases and it takes the samples more frequently. And that's cool. And we're, we're all very used to that uh, computer noise as it is directed to frequency. We get the standard 1960s computer noise, which all of us love. But we become really used to it. And it's not the only way that this functionality could be used you can feed different waveforms into it for it to sample than just a noise waveform. In fact, let's, uh, let's put uh, a sawtooth wave from oscillator one as the source of the sampling, as the waveform that is being sampled. Okay, that just kind of sounds like a uh, kind of sounds like a just like a square wave. But here, let's slow it down and see what happens. So, what do you think's happening right there? If the sample and hold is sampling a voltage at metric points defined by the LF, LFO frequency. Basically, what we're hearing right there is it's mapping out the shape of the sawtooth wave, the low frequency sawtooth wave that's happening in oscillator one. And that's pretty cool. And if we wanted it to be a little more interesting, we could bring in some randomness with the noise generator. So you're not just limited to the standard sample and hold uh, random computery thing. You can actually do some shaping. Another thing you can do is you can come over to keyboard trig. And now the LFO is no longer in charge of the, the timing for the sampling. You are now in charge of it. Every time you press a key, it's going to take a sample of the voltage present in right now, uh, voltage control oscillator one sawtooth wave and the noise source mixed.
So if you really want to mess with someone who has one of these but doesn't really know how to use it, put it on this setting. So then they go to play it and they'll be like, like what? Here, I'm just going to play a G triad. It'll drive them crazy. Uh, don't tell them I told you. Everyone will come after me. Uh, but yeah, it's a really fun thing. And it's actually a lot of fun when, when you're directing then the sample and hold to the filter because then you get different filter effects. We'll see that when we get there. Something we have not spoken of yet. Uh, well, also, we could switch VCO1 to square wave, and that's much more interesting when we're in the audio range because as a sample and hold source, you're just sampling one voltage and then another voltage and then another voltage and... Uh, and Just not that interesting. But uh, this is great for when we're in the audio range, of course, when we talk about the sample and hold mixer as a modulation mixer, that's gonna be cool. Okay, something we haven't spoken of is output lag. Okay, so we're back to the 1960s computer noise. It's very choppy, very metric. It's because our clock is a clock and it's uh, sampling at a clock rate. But we can, through the output lag, actually apply what is essentially portamento to these changes. The output lag, like the portamento, resists quick changes. And the more you uh, turn it on, the less it will allow changes to be quick. So it rounds off the corners of your very metric uh, blocky wave shape. which is a, a much smoother, sort of more organic sort of uh, sample and hold sound. And it can be really useful uh, when you're using it again in the filter as a more, as creating a variation in timbre over time. And if you put it on keyboard trig, you'll get what is actually very much like real portamento. That'll really mess with someone if you do that to them. Okay. And so then if we go over to oscillator two and we bring up the sample and hold mixer, as we learned when we were looking at oscillator two, now what is happening is we're no longer using the sample and hold. It's not really mixing sample and hold. Right now, it's just taking these wave shape sources and applying them to the frequency of oscillator two. And if you want to have, uh, I think a lot of people think that you can't do oscillator modulation of another oscillator, and it's just not true. On this synthesizer, all you have to do is go into the sample and hold mixer, make sure uh, oscillator one is uh, in the audio range. And then uh, we can apply oscillator one's sawtooth output in the audio range to the frequency of oscillator two. And if you want to back that off so it's not all crazy. And then retune. You can add some saturation to your oscillator, which is one of the tricks that people always used in the mini Moog was using that third oscillator to modulate the um, first two oscillators in the audio range. And so when people used to sort of decry the poor ARP Odyssey, they'd say things like, oh, well, you can't do audio range modulation, but it's not true. It's just that it's weirdly hidden in this thing called the sample and hold mixer. 
and this is us using the square wave output from VCO1. And then of course, if we vary the frequency of oscillator one, we'll get different effects. And you're gonna have to retune oscillator two because some of these modulations will mess with its frequency. Um, a lot of these really weird modulations that you're going, what, what would I use that for? Um, their usage becomes more apparent if you're like mixing and matching and going all over the board. Uh, and it really makes for some really organic, complex, almost acoustic in nature sounds. <laughs> So that is the Samplin' Hold Mixer, Samplin' Hold.